In this amazing world of health and wellness, one needs to realize that there is never a right answer to eternal health and bliss. There is no single diet, exercise, pill, product, or method that's going to fix you. But we can change, heal, adapt, pivot, and be open to a new way of thinking, functioning, and thriving. We evolve and we learn, or I truly hope that's the case. As many of you know, if you've been listening to this podcast for any length of time, I have called meditation my game changer in life, allowing me to be more present, aware of my thoughts, more grateful and reflective, and most importantly, being able to get back to sleep when my brain refuses to shut off. This new love of meditation, which I never thought I would do, recently also led me to yoga something I actually swore I would never do. So evolve, that's the word today. In doing so, I have been exposed to an entirely different world of movement, thought, breath, and self-care. I've been doing this at Yoga Town, so yes, that officially makes me a townie. Now, because I love to dig deeper and ask the right questions, I looked into the story behind the business and why it seemed to differ from the rest. And that's when I found Tracy Billows and her remarkable journey. Yes, she is an amazing yoga teacher. Her classes are packed. People follow her to take her classes. But her journey of being hospitalized from a suicide attempt to building a thriving business is truly inspiring. From living the life most of us would dream of, to hitting rock bottom, to starting over, putting health and wellness at the forefront, traveling the world, learning from the masters, and building on this new foundation, there is so much that you're going to be able to take from this story. You'll get a mixture of everything in this next hour, an inspiring story, the truth about yoga, the benefits of its practices, debunking the myths and all the stereotypes, and everything else that you can take away and bring into your own life. So, as always, welcome to Living Your Life with Leanne Lang, the podcast brought to you by Extension Marketing. And please, if you can, they've got some great information there. Please check out extensionmarketing.com. Hi, Tracy. Hi. <laughs> that was, uh, I was a little hard of an intro to get through because I know there's such a story to this, but... You're good? We're good to go? I'm good to go. Okay. Thank you for that. Oh, I, I'm so excited for this. And I think you loved it because we were talking and, and we were talking to Veronica before the podcast even started, kind of going, I was like, die hard. Never am I going to a yoga class. This yeah. is so not for me. Like, yeah. And that, like you said, I love those kind of people. Honestly, it's my favorite. <laughs> it is my favorite. And, you know, I felt like I was one of those people at one point too, right? Yoga, I don't know. There is, there are, you know, as you mentioned in your intro, there's so many myths. People have so many different different ideas of what yoga is or what it isn't. And, you know, I was so intentional when I created um, Yoga Town about making it a space that would allow people to kind of make the experience what it would be for them, right? On purpose, not a lot of statues of Buddha, not a lot of, you know, just like neutral colors, like really, because I wanted to not scare anyone away. I didn't want to freak people out. And my favorite are usually people, they usually get dragged by someone, right? Right. Someone comes in and they're like, I don't know about this, like not my thing. This is what I do. Or I don't like to be still, or I don't like quiet, or they think it's going to be easy or who knows. Um, and then just to see them all of a sudden, like you just, and sometimes it happens in a matter of a couple of the classes. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Um, I just, I love it. I love, I love to see the transformation and just see people. Um, they're, they're just their eyes open in a new way, you yeah. know, and, and you, you can see it in their being. You can feel it in their energy, the shift, right? And how much it, um, yeah, just how it helps them. Like I can imagine you you know, being at the class and seeing this person coming in, kicking and screaming, yeah. you know, being dragged in by whoever it was. And then they're sheepishly, sheepishly looking at you the next time they come in and they kind of look at you and they're like, I'm back. Well, you know what? Often, that's how I oh, felt. Totally. I like, oh my God. Totally. And what actually often ends up happening is that person then starts coming more than the person that originally brought mm -hmm. them. And they're like, you know, I, I'm, I'm addicted. I'm obsessed. I love this. It's, I feel so good. My body feels good. My mind feels good. I'm sleeping better. My mood's better. You know, all these things, you know, and, the, and, and they become, you know, then the regular and then the champion yeah. for bringing in new people, uh, as well. It's amazing though. Cause, and I love that snowball effect though. Like that is a hundred percent how our business has grown. It's just been, someone comes in, they feel great. They have a great experience with yoga, with, you know, our studio, and then they bring a friend and then they want to bring another friend. And they, it's, yeah. it's, it's, you can't help, but want to, you want other people to do it. Cause it's, 
It's so great and there's so much to offer. And you've had that because you've had all of these people bringing friends from different areas of the city and you have gone from this one studio to having three studios. You've got uh, Preston, you've got Stittsville, you've got Barhaven for those listeners that are actually here in, in the city. And you know, it's really interesting because you mentioned the benefits and we are going to get to all of these things. But I, I've even said like for me, because I'm like everyone knows like I'm a gym girl, right? It's like going to the gym, get my workouts, feel strong. Yeah. I actually have become stronger Yeah. based on the fact that my body is more mobile and a little bit more flexible again. Yeah. And like I, I don't hurt the same way. I'm not totally. sore. So, you know, once you kind of catch on, yeah. it's like Wow. Like mind blowing. Totally. And when your kids start mm-hmm. saying, like, Mom, have you been going to yoga lately? And you know, because so, <laughs> we're nicer. <laughs> that's the thing. Like more patience, calmer. Like you 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 know, even like friends and family and you know, kids will notice a difference too, mm-hmm. right? And um and what I also love about it is that, you know, you mentioned the word evolve. For me, I've been practicing yoga now um 20 years. And what I love the most about it is it's never the same. It has evolved so much and it changes with me as my life change. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as I go through different stages of life, my yoga has evolved, um, just to kind of meet me where I'm at in terms of the stage that, so it's never, I I'm never, you don't arrive. It's not like, Oh yeah, I'm there. Got it. Right. I've got this yoga thing. Check mark done. It just, it continues to evolve. It's like you're learning, um, more and more about yourself and it's just, it's so cool. So I love that part of it too. Uh, it, it really is. And I have to say like, there's not been one single class that I've gone to that has been the same. Like every single one is incredibly different. So Let's go to that because you just said, you know, you've been practicing this for 20 years. And, you know, as you mentioned, like there's always growth, there's always change. But 20 years isn't the longest amount of time for maybe somebody that you're like, oh, I've been doing this for, you know, you meet these yogis. Because yoga wasn't originally what you intended on doing, like on yeah. being I, this was never part of the plan oh for no you. never you were like you were like no. high flying no b- business woman corporate in yeah. Toronto right totally so take totally. us back a little bit to that well and even when I look back at like you know I played a lot of sports growing up and as a kid and I was you know through school and high school and stuff on the basketball team volleyball team that kind of thing and like you're tall I am tall. I probably should mention that for people who are listening like yeah you, you, there's There's a statuesque (laughs) quality to you. But what I didn't ever have is um, like a gracefulness. You know, I never danced. I never did gymnastics. I never, you know, so while I was athletic, I had no gracefulness to me to the point of, you know, it was something that, I kind of got teased on a little bit when I was younger in school. Like not clumsy, but like. Yeah, a bit awkward, a bit awkward and just, and no grace there. In basketball, I remember in particular, you know, some games and then a couple of kids like laughing because I was clumsy. I was a bit awkward and I was the center and, you know, so I was pretty good. I was really tall, but I was a bit awkward, a bit clumsy. So just even, um, you know, old high school friends or people are like when they first heard like Tracy's a yoga teacher. (laughs) Like, oh, wow, that's the last thing I would have imagined. And then, you know, again, continuing to evolve to having a studio and and, and now training teachers. And uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, because a lot of those high school friends would have just known that Tracy ended up in the corporate world. Totally. Kind of. And like, you know, type A personality, triple A personality, right? I, I like wanted to go to the best school and OK, what's the best program that I could take? And then even coming out of the program, what, um, you know, what company is the hardest to get into? That's the one I'll shoot for. Um, and, you know, I was surrounded by my whole circle of friends. We were work hard, play hard. Um you know, like nothing can stop us, you know, that was, and and just go, 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 go. Um, And while, you know, I have a lot of really fond memories and so many great experiences kind of growing up and through university and through my twenties, at the same time, there was a piece of me inside that, um, you know, just was off and I wasn't feeling great. And I had a lot of depression and I would go through like kind of ups and downs and, um, and a certain bit of emptiness, right? So this just like traveling a lot, um, you know, doing a lot, always involved in a lot, super active, very social. Um, but like I was trying to fill and it was just like a never ending well that couldn't be filled essentially. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was, uh, you know, a couple of relationships that then didn't work out, like just, you know, and then finally I ended up on the doorstep of a yoga class, right? And it was one of my, one of my best friends that said, you know what, why don't you try? And it was at a low point. I was not doing well. Can I, can I ask you that? Because, you know, 
I read a blog like we were talking about this when I came out with my like 100th episode right speaking kind of like in a from a very vulnerable place yeah. and kind of sharing things that you haven't shared before or really kind of having to go these are where I made mistakes this is what I was feeling this is how I had to kind of pivot you wrote this blog which was really for me like like very empowering and and very much like I, I felt like more even connected to you mm. based on this story but it wasn't an easy transition and I think a lot of people before you wrote this blog post and this was like after celebrating the 10 years yeah. of Yoga Town yeah. you got very real yeah. in that how dark it actually yeah. how dark it really got for you yeah. in yeah. this living fast paced life oh totally and you know it's I, I've never been one that shares really openly right and it took, it was the 10 year anniversary of the business. And now there have been a few odd moments where I had come up in conversation before. And when we were hitting the 10 year mark, first of all, I was like, wow, this is crazy. I can't believe we're at 10 years. And you know, and I was really reflecting on, you know, I often get asked about like, what is my story? How did I get into yoga? What's the history of Yoga Town? And I really felt compelled to share at that time. Um, I'm like, I'm ready. I think I'm ready. So I wrote the blog. It took me about a week. I rewrote it about a hundred times. Um, but really, and the biggest, um, you know, kind of entry point for me into yoga was, was an attempt at my own life. Um, it was a very, very dark time for me. At the same time, looking back at that period, you know, it was like the lowest of lows. At the same time, it was also like, I call it kind of a rebirth, um, for me, when that happened, you know, when I kind of woke up in the hospital, essentially, I was like, okay, well, I'm still here. Whether it's like something else that's guiding me, there's more out there for me, I don't know, but I'm going to need to figure it out. And now the cat's out of the bag. You know, my family knows, my friends know, there was no, because I was very good at putting on a pretty good front. And you know, when I was really just like crumbling on the inside and on the outside, it looked like it really did. It looked like I had it all friends, great job, all the things. And inside I was just, um, yeah, I was, I felt empty. I felt alone. I felt isolated. I was just like, there's gotta be more to life. Like, is this it? I think you speak that. And yet I think we're always so surprised when the people that we think, have it all from the outside right they've got the job they've got the looks they've got the friends they've got the like totally. money they they we don't realize who's suffering yeah. like really suffering yeah uh, you yeah. know and so I yeah. would I would think right for those that were around you it was almost like oh a shock totally totally a shock and it was um you know and and so sad and hard to I mean that's just so hard to um you know, you want to help the ones that you love. And yet there's nothing like at the end of the day, I also needed to be the one that helped myself. I needed to have, there had to be like a little shred of me that wanted to live. Um, you know, and there was, and I kind of held on to that. And with all of, of course, so much support from my family and friends. Um, but a lot of, like I had to really navigate. And that's probably the thing that I'm the most proud of is navigating that. Okay, now what? Like how and now what? And I really, I felt let down by the system and I was kind of getting help from the system, but not in a way that felt like it was really working for me. Um, and so in that, terms of dealing with depression or totally and getting or help bounding or coming out of this really dark period. Yeah. And I was and like therapy, but it was like, you know, I would see someone once every three weeks or, you know, and then and then on some medications. But then I that, you know. I feel like the medication and even having a therapist that I would go see, say, once every couple of weeks got me to kind of like a baseline where I was OK. But then I was like, OK, well, I don't want to just be OK. Like, I want to thrive if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to be here. And now I feel like this is that's in a sense that was like sort of my rebirth. Right. Like, OK, Let's do this, but I'm not going to hide gonna anymore. Live. I'm living, so totally. might as well make this totally. Worth my life. And I don't want to just get by. I want to thrive, and I want to make a difference, and I want to. And it literally was like I felt like completely starting over. I was like, okay, so what do I enjoy? What could I see myself doing all day, every day for the rest of my life? 
how do I want to give back in a way that feels meaningful? Um, how, you know, these were like the questions and this started the whole path of like, okay, well, I really love yoga. I love food. I studied holistic nutrition. I st- you know, I just started dabbling in as much as I could and where I found, um, some success or where I felt like it helped, you know, I just dove in and I went for it. Um, and yeah, so it was never, you know, definitely wasn't an easy path and there was a lot of bumps in the road. Um, I really, the only way that I know is just like try and see, right? So I was like, I don't know, let's give it a whirl and see how it goes. And you learn, you know, you adapt, you try something else that works great. This part doesn't work great. But did you get a lot of pushback? I mean, not necessarily from family and friends, but like from people who knew you as kind of corporate running in high circles and kind of going, you've walked away from that yep. to be a yoga instructor. Yep. My f- I don't, and I don't mean that in a negative no, totally. way, but totally. The, yeah. And well, and I would the say premise behind it. Yeah, for sure. I would say that my parents, especially, <laughs> and like, I love them, love them dearly, but they also, it just, it's confusing for them. And as a parent, um, in, we grew up not with, like with not a lot, um, you know, so they also saw me as having success in terms of like, you know, their definition of success, right? A great job, getting paid well, totally all of those things. And, um, you know, so it was, it was definitely challenging for them. They were like, oh gosh, you know, I was impulsive in their mind, right? Like did impulsive things and kind of made decisions that they were like, are you sure about this? I don't know. So for sure it was definitely hard for them. But I think after, and for me, I was like, well, it's this or like, I, I, I don't want to live. Like I can't, there's no, like, I just, I can't go back to that. So I'm just going to have to try this. And then I think after, Doing a few things, like for example, one of them was going to India. Right? Yeah, and I, I totally was like, want to ask you about this because I was like, loving you yoga, went- totally. I was like, loving it. I'm going to the source. I'm gonna go to India. I did like a ten week, you know, and they were just like, holy ten shit, weeks in, <laughs> doing ten weeks in, in yeah. India, and and studied their yoga and Ayurveda. Did um, like an Ayurveda cleanse. Okay, lived can, in an can you ashram. explain that because I've done a couple of podcasts on Ayurvedic medicine. Yeah. So can you describe what it was that you were learning? and to be able to have it separate from one course to another? Totally. So what I love about, so Ayurveda is like kind of the um, Indian um, form of medicine, right? And so if you are sick, you would see an Ayurveda doctor. So it's kind of like a sister science to yoga. They kind of go hand in hand. And, um, but what I really love about Ayurveda, it's like very holistic in nature and it treats the whole person. So it looks at where your imbalances are. Um, it looks at like diet, lifestyle. Um, you know, it's just, it's like a really well-rounded kind of holistic program. So I went and saw an Ayurvedic doctor when I was there. Um, you know, they kind of did an uh, initial assessment on me and then they came up with a, um, you know, kind of like a detox program for me, but that was specifically uh, geared and designed for me. Right. And so, um, an example is I got massages and they used like almost a sand. It was like a grit kind of, and they were like, no, you're too, too oily. You actually need the the sand. And I thought, well, that doesn't sound very relaxing, uh, different herbal like steams where they would, you know, on purpose pick certain herbs. Um, so, and it's, it's really about bringing your body into balance and it feels very like, I love nature. Um, I love being outdoors. I do love food. Like my grandmother, you know, my dad is a huge gardener. We've grown up always like kind of growing our own food. So I'm very much, um, I'm really connected to that. And I feel like, um, yeah, so Ayurveda, it just felt right to me. I was going to say at, at that point though, you're still kind of in recovery in this transformation. So when you're going through these treatments, for some reason, I'm seeing like this release a huge like I'm, I'm almost saying like when you talk about this detox it was almost like all of the it was like brushing away the negative it was just like releasing what you needed to let go of totally before you could put back in the health side 100 percent. and I feel like this is also why yoga has been such a savior for me I always talk about you know my yoga mat as this safe space safe um, space uh, where I can just go and feel what I'm feeling You know, because I think that initially when people come to yoga, you know, there can sometimes be, I call it the honeymoon period, you know, you feel amazing, but then you might not feel amazing for a while, depending on what is going on in your life. And, um, it took me a little while to kind of figure that out because at one point I wasn't feeling great when I was practicing. And then I was feeling 
shame and guilt and feeling bad because I was like, well, this is supposed to make me feel better and make me feel good. Why am I not? So I was kind of like, and then I started to really understand, oh no, it just allows you to feel what you're feeling. If you stuff down those negative um, feelings or emotions or memories or traumas or whatever, you know, they, they just get stuck there in your body. And so if it's yoga is and, and breathing exercises and the like, cleanses um, is an opportunity I find to, yeah, the stuff that's just like stuck in your body from years of essentially ignoring, right? I mean, I, I, I definitely went through, I feel like every time I went into a deep depression, it was my body, my spirit, my heart telling me like something is off. You're not well, pay attention. And I wouldn't pay attention. I would just externally, right, drink more, go out more, shop more, eat more, um, right, all of the things. And then and, and then yoga was this, um, the total opposite, right? Ev- like so much of our life is externally focused, right? L- other people, other things, places. Um, yoga is completely the opposite. It's like this inward journey, right? And so I had to almost like relearn and figure out like, okay, well, who am I? Who am I? What makes my heart tick? What makes me feel alive? Where in my body do I feel that? Oh, interesting. You know, just like this whole journey of, um, yeah, kind of like rediscovering. At what point was was the plan to go from yoga was just something that you enjoyed, Mm -hmm. that it was part of your healing process, that it was part of going inward in a different way, did you start to realize, hmm, I'm doing this. I can teach this. Yeah. This is this is where I see myself going with it. Because it's one thing to be really good at something and enjoy yeah. it and another thing to teach and share. Totally. Um, I feel like my friends were quite instrumental in that um, because it was so, so profound for me. I would talk about it all the time. I was one of those like, let's get everybody to come to yoga. It will change your life. And I would use that language. Like, and they're like, oh, wow, change your life. I'm like, literally change your life. It saved mine, like quite literally saved mine. And, um, you know, when I would talk about a teacher training, but then of course all the self-doubt would creep in, um, you know, it wasn't good enough for whatever reason. And, uh, and so I felt like, you know, definitely encouragement from friends where they finally just said, you just need to go and do this. Like just sign up for teacher training. I've actually done two teacher trainings. Well, I've done so many different trainings, but originally back then, the first teacher training I did was purely just for me no intention of teaching. This is just for me, just for me. And then I started to, after it was over, oh, maybe I wonder, huh? And I felt like I just kept getting pulled. I just kept getting pulled in that direction. And I do have, you know, I do have, um, like that entrepreneur side to me where I always kind of thought that I would do something that was like for myself, um, in terms of business. And even when I was in corporate world, um, you know, I, I, I always thought like, oh, maybe I'd have my own business someday. And then this just totally made sense. It just, I was like, this is like just what I need to do. It has helped me in such a profound way. I want to share it with as many people as possible. Um, and I liked the fact that I could kind of marry both where I was running a business and I was teaching yoga. Cause I do, I, I do enjoy both aspects. Um, so. Although let's be realistic during a time when you're actually building a business like that you you find like you get further and further away from actually doing the thing that you love the most which was doing the yoga right? totally like, I'm assuming as the business is growing and it has grown exponentially uh you know with members and with you know locations yeah there comes a time when you were like I don't think I taught a yoga class oh totally this week yeah. because I've yeah. been too busy running the business yeah yeah hundred percent hundred percent but you know, um, like I, I, we do teacher trainings now and I'm a big part of leading the teacher training. So I get to mentor other, um, you know, students who very similar, right. They're signing up for the training because yoga has touched them in such a deep way. Um, that's like kind of the next evolution for them is to learn more, maybe teach or maybe not. Um, and honestly, my favorite thing is just being at the studio and hearing the stories Mm. of the clients that come in, the students that come in. And that's, definitely what fuels me. And I hear like, it's, it's amazing actually hearing, you know, things like I lost my job this year. 
and you know, because of this place, I was able to maintain some confidence. My mom passed away this year. This is like the only place where I feel like myself, um, you know, on, on and on. And that's where, you know, while I don't teach as much as I would like to, I mean, there's some days where I'm like, can someone just take the business, please? I just want to teach and I don't actually want to do anything related to, you know, the business side of it. Um, but then very quickly, it turns to like, I'm so grateful that we have an amazing team. We have a thriving business that's doing well and helping people. Yeah. It's so, okay. So I want to do this like a Coles Notes version because I'm going to get to like all the stuff that we're actually talking about. This podcast is brought to you by Extension Marketing. They are a new breed of marketing agency that acts as your virtual marketing department, designing and implementing cost effective marketing strategies that will grow your business. I can speak to this personally as I've been using the extension marketing team to help me launch and grow my business. Founder Pat Whalen has been a lifesaver for me, a genuine coach guiding me along the way into uncharted territory. Tell them you're a friend of the show and receive a free one hour consultation. Check them out at extensionmarketing.com. You start the business with a friend. Yeah. Uh, and like if you even looked at the blog post, which I'll, I'll get so that people can actually go and read. You know, there's pictures of you guys like with face masks oh, on, yeah, totally. taking like a former like was it a, a nightclub? But like, what was it, it before? Was. It, was it was a, a nightclub, night- and yeah. it was like it reeked, and it had like black walls everywhere. And and I think it was one of those they left in the middle of the night, and you never saw them again. Kind of you know places. And um, well, when we opened, it was 2008, so you know worst financial crisis. Uh, in, in, in a long time. Of course, I have no idea what's going on in the world. I'm just like, this is what I want to do. And so it took a long time. We tried to find money. Nobody wanted to invest. They were all like, you're crazy. Do not start a business right now. This is the worst possible time to start a business. And like my immediate was, well, now more than ever, people will need yoga to help with the stress. And, you know, they tried to well start off smaller or just do like have non heated, like just regular, if it goes well, add heat. I'm like, you're not getting it. Like you don't understand. Um, so it was great. And you know what, looking back, um, my business partner, Paula and I, it was so great. And it was, I'm so glad that I had someone Um, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, business partnerships are challenging and, you know, often they won't work out. And, but when I look back at the first few years, especially it's so challenging. And I would have a day where I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do it. I I don't know if I can get out of bed today. And she's like, I got you. I got you. And then it would flip, you know, and, and we could like doing this, building it yourself. So once you kind of get this nightclub turned over, you're like working by day, I know waitressing and stuff by night to keep the the bills paid. And then you start to open up the doors. You're having to teach, like you're teaching multiple classes a day. So we taught all of the classes, but I think even more than that, it was still, so this was now we've been 11 years open. Um, and it's, it's come a long way in terms of what people's idea of what yoga actually is yeah. has really come a long way. But 11 years ago, even like, oh, they were like, what, what is this yoga? And then even hot yoga, they didn't understand the concept of, and I was like, well, the room is heated. Oh, like they just didn't even know what hot yoga meant. And you know, like you probably don't drink, probably a vegetarian, must be a hippie, must be, it was really, it was so important for me to like, I am just like you. I'm a normal person where my brain is in a million places. I need this just as much as you do. I'm I'm not on like any different kind of level than you are. So I feel like in one sense, you know, half the job was, yeah, getting this the studio open and then being there teaching classes. And then half the job was just going out to educate people on what yoga is and what it can do for them and trying to convince them to come and try it. Okay. So you're hitting on like two different demographics. You're hitting on one where you just want it to be normal people just yeah. moving. And then you have those that are like, well, no, I want it to be some spiritual guidance at the top who's going to fix all my problems. And it's like this yogi who like can sense, you know, everything. <laughs> like you're like... You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was like either yeah. do I want to be normal? Do I want to feel like, you know, I've got this this yogi who connects with the universe and yeah. is teaching my class. Yeah. Yeah. And I, for me, it was so important that I'm like, we are the same people. I have the same struggles that you do. And, you know, you spoke about, um, um, you know, like from the outside, people can see like, oh, wow, so successful and all these great things. And yet like crumbling on the inside, you know, in the 11 years that I've had the studio and all of the people that I have met if there's like one thing that has really, uh, that I've learned, it's you have no idea what people are going through. 
no idea. Some of the stories that I've heard, um, and after a little while, like they don't necessarily come out right away, but, um, you know, you do develop really close relationships with people and, you know, sometimes they'll open up and I just, I'm floored at just the hardships that people are going through and the struggles that they have in their life. And, you know, yeah, you look from the outside and you think, oh, yeah, great, amazing, good relationship, this, that. And so I'm really, I'm so hyper aware of always making that choice to just see the innocence in everyone and know that everyone is hurting over something in some way or has some pain or an old wound or maybe a fresh one. Um, so can we, like my, my deepest intention for the studio has always been just a space where people can heal. And that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of people. And I would never outwardly say that, right? Like I vividly remember sitting in the studio the night before we opened, you know, having a meditation and calling in, like, what are the qualities, right? And it was like healing, you know, deep healing. But am I going to go out and tell people that? Like, come and you'll be healed. No, right? I was like, for whatever reason you want to come, it does not matter. Right. Because some people are going, no, I want to come and look like the actress yeah. who said that she does yoga and yeah. she's really cut now totally. and she looks great. So that's what I want, right? Oh, totally. Like you, have, you have that person coming in going, yep. I just want, I yeah. want to lose weight. I want to have that, like, you know, I want to be toned. Mm-hmm. And, and look the way a certain, yeah, totally famous person might look and they accredit it to yoga, um, you know, and all those things are great. All of those things are great. I was like, just come. And like I said, I feel like the evolution of um, what, you know, yoga, it, it creeps in, in a sneaky way. Right. And you, you probably will see those benefits in terms of like what you were looking for when you came in. Mm-hmm. And then I feel like all of a sudden you start to realize other like, oh, wasn't expecting that. That's pretty cool. Um yeah. And it just, it keeps growing. It keeps growing. And then hopefully you meet some great people. That's the other thing that, um, I, I really feel like, it, you know, people are starving for connection, right? They want to feel like they can be seen and heard. And, and I feel like that's also kind of what we offer is, you know, you mm-hmm. can come in just like drop your shit at the door. We don't care if you've had a good day, bad day, what we're happy to see you come on in mm-hmm. as you are. Um, and yeah. yeah. And like speaking of connection, I mean, you could also put it like it could be a great matchmaking place too. You met yeah. your husband. I did. You met Jason. <laughs> I did. <laughs> coming, out I of, did. coming out of a yoga class. Totally. Right? So he was actually, he was taking he was a, a student. class. Yeah, yep. totally. It's so, so funny. But it like, fast it happened forward, yeah. so innocently. Um, but, you know, a lot of people do, because this is the other thing sometimes, and not just in yoga, I feel like this can happen just wellness in general. Um, you know, once you kind of get on the path of, of for me, it, it all kind of happened at the same time where I sort of cleaned up my diet, you know, was kind of detoxing on a mental level, physical level, the yoga, um, meditation, um, you know, you start to, uh, you know, there, there's probably going to be certain people in your life that you might not want to be around anymore. <laughs> right? That feel toxic or just don't support the the path that you're now on. Um, and not in a bad way, but just we all head in different mm-hmm. directions, right? And so um, I feel like it's a nice place too to be able to meet other people that are kind of on the path, if you will, right? Yeah. And yeah. And so it's great. I mean, you get married, you've got two kids, yep. but the path between you and Jason kind of grew in itself because it be it became first a student and at the classes to then becoming a business partner because the business has now exponentially grown with you and Jason running things together. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been amazing. So he's been about three, maybe four, three or four years, um, where he's worked on the business with me full time. Originally we thought, Oh, just come part time, help out with a few things. And then very quickly we realized like, Oh wow, this actually is a really good match. Um, what's nice is that, you know, we are totally on the same page, but at the same time, we think very differently. Our brains are very different and we have different strengths. So we're able to kind of, um, sort of divvy things Mm -hmm. up in a sense. I also feel like at one point I just felt so burnt out that, um, you know, I I needed to feel, I, I needed to take a bit of a step back. And so he was able to, you know, because he kind of came into the picture later on in terms of helping with the business, right? He's not at that stage. He's actually no, raring he's to go. He's still fresh, right? Totally. He's absolutely still fresh. Excited. So it's it's nice that, um, yeah, just we work we work really well together. We work great together. And he's been doing yoga longer than I have. Um, so it was, 
even it, just it wasn't in like he was of, new to it he was already almost yeah. he was on that path beforehand yeah. and he's big and i know that he teaches meditation courses as yeah. well so yeah you know yeah it, it kind of goes both ways yeah. now what i have noticed because i've been a new student and learning and you know and i mentioned at the top right like i was like go go gym and and most of the time people go from yoga and then start into meditation, totally. right? Because that's usually the path it goes. Yep. And mine was kind of the opposite and understanding like where I felt blocks mm. of like where my breath, like where I felt my body was blocking energy. And so somebody was like, you know what? Like really get the body moving a different way, you know, and everyone just assumed because I was a gymnast that I was going to be flexible. Yeah. I'm like the tightest. At, like I go in there and I'm just like, oh my God. Yeah. But I look around and I see every different body type. Totally. I see a lot of different backgrounds. Totally. But I've had to learn also that there's lots of different classes and yep. that's where I kind of want. So let's kind of go through a bit of education because people are like, Am I just kind of sitting in one pose? Is there movement? You've mentioned hot yoga, but there's different ones. You know, yep. you can go to Amovadi or you can go to, you know, you go to the yoga class at the gym. Like everything's a little bit different, but is there like one, is there like a base foundation that it starts on and then it kind of yeah. explodes in different directions? Well, the first thing I would say is I feel like people have this idea in their head that they have to be flexible. Right. I'm not flexible. Oh my so therefore I should not do yoga, which I always joke. Right. You would never say I'm really dirty. Therefore, I should not have a shower. Right. Like that's why you want to come. That's great. And it's about more than building flexibility for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, they feel like that. Yeah, that, that they're not going. I also think people don't realize the diversity of people that do practice yoga. Oh, it's right? amazing when it, I look around the room. All ages, all shapes, all sizes, all different levels, all different backgrounds. And you're so focused on what you're doing yourself. You, you are. know, you really don't have. And you're not looking around thinking, oh, wow, that's like, look at that person or look at that. The okay, collective. I'll, though, I will be I will be like I'm all, I'm people watch your people person yeah so I, and I'm fascinated also by body and movements yeah like so it's always just been part of my life yeah just like I'm always fascinated when I like watching the Ironman right and I yeah. know you've done Ironman so I haven't even gotten to like the fact that you've done those but watching an Ironman the, especially the one at Pachamla I would see like heavier set yeah. people yeah accomplishing something that what you would consider like the thinnest fittest person could never do totally and yet I see these you know, these people being able to do it, carrying a much, much more weight. And yeah. you were like, you know, you'd see them on the street and be like, oh, they must not hit the gym. And then I'd see them finishing an Ironman going, yeah. how is this possible? Yeah. And sometimes I can be in a yoga class and you can look at someone and think, you know, oh, this must be their first class. And then you see them and they've got like every single pose and they're flexible. And it's like, how is that? How is that body doing yeah. these moves? And so it's amazing to see. Yeah like how the body adapts and how it how it works its yeah. way out because yeah. Yeah. you're kind of getting your it's almost like you're oiling it's like oiling your car like yeah. it, it's it's like you're doing that to all the joints and totally. all the systems totally and I think there's so much variety out there it can be overwhelming for people and what I always say is try multiple because I can't tell you the number of people have said oh I've tried yoga yeah not for me not for me and I'm like well when and where were you and it was one class and not because it, it the, the there's a lot of variety but there's also a whole slew of different um, in terms of even teaching and the quality of teaching so if you're going to go to a into a studio setting any of the studios mm -hmm. here in the town you're going to get someone that has more training and more experience um less so at gyms and and then even you know just there's like a whole variety out there, right? In terms of the amount of experience that people have. And so I feel like that is part of what, so I'm like, try a few different places. Um, the great thing about lots of variety is that there is something for everyone. And I feel like you can resonate with, so typically, like there's going to be some that are like more flow vinyasa movement, right? Okay, so, so even start there. Even yeah. you saying those words, people are going, I have no idea what you're talking totally. about. So if you're looking on a schedule and you see a class that's flow and vinyasa, flow or vinyasa, it's going to be a faster pace, okay. right? So that was actually like a really great introduction for me. Like it's interesting to hear you say you started with meditation and then got into yoga. For right. sure, it's the other way around for most people. Right. And for me being like, triple a personality and you know go 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 I actually really liked something that was intense it helped get me out of my head and I wanted fast hard movement um 
you know, this, the slower practices were actually more challenging for me because I had a hard time just being still. And those are, what are those called? That's the yin, right? So you can go I to figured, yin. Okay. Yeah. Um, or even just hatha. At our studio, we call it um, a town mix practice. So a bit of a slower pace, um, not quite as fast, but still, you would still feel like you got to work out. Um, and then it could be something even like a stretch. We have one that's called stretch and unwind. So there's going to be so many different names, but the name in the description should give you an idea of what the, um, you know, essence of what the class is going to be. So someone might have unknowingly taken maybe what was like a yin class yep. or a slow moving class and yep. didn't realize that there are other forms of yoga that they could have done a much faster paced one, which has their body moving and flowing yep. the entire, yep. the entire hour. Yep. You're going to get something different from each of the classes. Totally. Absolutely. And I think the variety is good. So, um, a lot of like our students or clients that come will have a membership and they'll say come four or five, maybe even six times a week and a couple on the slower, more contemplative, reflective, meditative, and even like deeper stretches to then some that are more on the strength side of things and movement and flowing and, and getting more of, um, you know, an active kind of workout. Right. So, and then you're going to have the other spectrum, which are using this as an added feature to their normal training. Yes, totally. Right? So, I mean, totally. I realize that there are people who are full on, that's all they do. Yep. But I, I think what I'm starting to see is a lot more people incorporating once or twice a week into the mix of their normal 100%, workouts. 100%, totally. And are starting to, that's where I feel like is the a larger growth in numbers yep. of people from other sports, other disciplines <laughs> who are starting to see and feel the difference. Yeah. Well, that's the that. thing is like, so a lot of sports teams now have their own yoga instructor that they bring in. Right. And which also helps to kind of like debunk some of the myths, right. Of like, Oh, it's going to be mostly women or, or like shirtless, bearded, long haired guys. Yes. yes. Um, and, and, and my apologies to anyone and, and to Josh, who by the way is one of, <laughs> one of your teachers and he's awesome. Yeah. But like, honestly, and you know, like you do, you, th you think that, yeah. Um, I mean, do you want, I can go on like a list of other stereotypes, yeah. but I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that because yeah. I'm, yeah. I love you guys. Yeah. But there's, there's, there's the like sports teams that are now bringing on their own yoga instructor, yeah. right? So you you're like, like seeing oh, wow, an NHL right. player doing yoga. You're like, well, if they're doing totally. it, you know, and especially totally. to some of the guys, like yeah. these macho guys. And I'm just yeah. like, you know, the other side that I'm seeing a lot of is, um, companies like bringing in a yoga instructor so that they can actually do yoga a couple times a week, uh, lunch hour that they offer as something knowing that, um, it's going to help them in the end in terms of productivity and efficiency and, you know, people being happier and more motivated to, you know, work, mm -hmm. um, yeah, work a little better. So yeah, there's, there's, it can, it can be so many different things and it might even be something just as simple as I love the expression, just stop and breathe. And every now and then I'll go through a period where I'm like, okay, I need some reminders of this and I'll put them on sticky notes and I'll have one like on my mirror in my bathroom. I'll stick one on my fridge. I'll have one right on the steering wheel of my car so that when I sit down in my car and I see the sticky note, stop and breathe, I will stop. I will close my eyes. I'll relax my belly and I'll take like three deep breaths. It's amazing that alone three, like how long does that take? It's like two minutes, right? It doesn't take much time. It takes you two minutes to do three breaths. It could take yeah. someone else like, I'm like, that's 10 seconds for me. Like, <laughs> right. But the breath and how you train the breath yeah. is so different. And can we go to that? Because that is the foundation, right? Breath yep. is yep. where everything starts. Yeah, for sure. Well, and I think that's where how yoga is really differentiated from other forms of exercise. It's really is the foundation is first the breathing. So while you might even be working intensely, like, you know, say you're at the gym and you're working intensely, you're just, you're letting your breath like do its thing, right? In yoga, you're working really hard, but you're keeping control of the breath so that your nervous system just stays in that calm, relaxed. You don't get into like kind of fight or flight. Um, you know, keep the nervous system calm, keep it relaxed and keep that focus on the breath, even though you feel like you're working really hard. This is one of the things I love so much about yoga. It's like, the opposites can always exist. I'm like working really hard and I'm totally calm, right? I'm feeling, um, you know, I, the, like the effort and the ease, right? I'm going to work really hard, but I'm going to stay relaxed at the same time. That takes training. Totally. And that's the thing I also love about yoga. We call it a practice. 
we call it practice for a reason, right? Because there's not, you don't ever arrive. You don't ever get there. So it's not, there's no destination necessarily. It takes training. It takes practice and it takes some awareness. And I think that that's also um, what's really great about yoga. You have to pay attention. You start to pay attention to things like your breathing. You start to pay attention to your body in a way that you probably haven't before. No, especially when you talk about like the nervous system. Yeah. You know, we're not thinking as we're heading into yoga, oh, I'm going to be able to yeah. ease the, the nervous system. No. You're not thinking that. No, no. But that's what's happening. That's what's happening. Totally. Is the body can't. It's like it's impossible for the body to be anxious and breathe really deep belly breaths at the same time. So it's almost like you kind of trick your body into into letting go of some of that anxiety. If you if you're feeling really anxious, um, you know, try it It, next time you're feeling really anxious. And it's like your your breath is probably very shallow and very quick and very choppy. Right. So, um, you know, there's this idea of like you know, you kind of do you start with the body, do you start with the breath? Do you, how do you, to affect the mind? Cause it's all connected. So it's sort of a way in if you're feeling anxious physically to use the breath as a way to, um, yeah, just dissipate some of that anxiety. You know, one of the myths as we talked about was just the different bodies, the different people, the, but also, you know, when you're speaking a different language, you know, there's a language behind the yoga and yeah. you eventually click in and you eventually kind of figure out what the teachers are talking about. But yeah. is this something, you know, that you can explain the movements, you can explain the poses. Like why are the poses so precise? Like why is there a downward dog and, you know, a sphinx pose and the tree pose and warrior two? Like yeah. why are they like that? And why do people like why should they know this or what are they trying to achieve in each pose? I mean, ultimately... Like, is there a purpose with each thing? Yeah, totally. Absolutely. And and there's a purpose with the whole sequence. There's a purpose for each pose. And there's a purpose for how you want to teach that pose as well. Because you can teach downward facing dog in very different ways at depending on kind of like what you're trying to achieve. I think that where I've really come to, um, and it's very different. How I teach yoga now is very different than when I taught five years ago. And I'm actually a lot less worried about it looking a certain way. And so just it's not m- like you have to be so aware of your form. Like it's more for me, the feeling. Okay. It's more about the feeling. Like, so what do you notice when you do this? And sometimes, um, you know, it's just getting people in their bodies. We live up in our heads almost all of the time. And it's just trying to kind of get people in their bodies and discovering for themselves. Because also what might feel good for you in a certain pose might not feel good for someone else in a certain pose. So I'm much less of a stickler in terms of specific alignment. I'm like, try this way. And maybe on purpose next time, let's try this way also for the variety. Let's work the tissues in a different way. Life doesn't happen in perfect alignment. You know, if you trip and fall, you know, are your joints always going to be perfectly lined up, you know, stacking and probably not. Um, So why not on purpose? Let's use this as a way to just, yeah, work the body and the tissues kind of in different ways. There is like, okay, so, but there are some that are like a foundation, a core, a balance. Yep. Yep. Like there's something for... Totally. All of those. Totally. And that's the thing is like, I feel like yoga is a great, um, you cover, cover it all, right? So I feel like you get to work the flexibility, you get to work the joints, you're working strength, um, 100%. You're working endurance, even some of the poses, especially if you hold them a little bit, right? You can just feel like the muscles shaking, your heart starts racing. Um, so I feel like it's a nice, well-rounded, um, where you kind of get a little bit of everything. And Some days you might feel like you can really push it and work, you know, hard. And other days you're like, you know what? I actually feel like I need to just dial it back and um, just restore a little bit more and not just push myself. There's going to be people listening that don't have access to a yoga studio, Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe can't afford to go take classes. But, you know, you can go onto YouTube, you can Google anything and be able to find something. What do you recommend for them yeah like what would you say start here or work through here you know so that we can give them a sense of trying to appreciate and try this if they're not able to to get somewhere and get proper instruction yep totally so um what I would say is just do a search on YouTube and try different ones there are so many and there's so many different teachers and 
people will resonate with different people in, in different ways. So what I would say is if you have something specific, maybe it's yoga for sleep. Maybe it's yoga for stress relief. Maybe it's yoga for a new mom. Maybe it's, um, yoga for strength. I want to get stronger. Um, you know, I would, I would think of like, what's pulling you to yoga? Like what is the, um, you know, the thing that's kind of like drawing you there, do a search, try different things, just try. Um, but don't just try one thing and then stop, right. Try different things. We actually have, um, yoga town has a YouTube channel that has four classes on there that are free. So, um, like a town mix, a power, I think there's a flow yin there's anyway, there's four classes. Okay. So there's a place to start as well. Um, so it's my yoga town dot myyogatown.com is our website if you just search oh but go on, like, go on. we have a youtube, YouTube channel. channel yeah we have oh, a youtube channel so just search yoga town youtube there's four yoga classes on there um you know that's a great place to start and then otherwise just do and see what pops up and try some different and you'll find something really because sometimes it's even even a matter of this might sound silly but you know i really don't like that voice right or um how they speak or okay. what they speak to right so that's there why i say just look for different ones to that so yeah. what is it like i i hear you talking this way but i've taken your class and you know there's something very soothe like your voice changes yeah. or your dialogue or the way you yeah you get softer yeah you know there's a gentleness there's yep. like a pause yeah. there's timing totally it, which you don't really think of when you're thinking of like, you know, some of the trainers that are like, go, 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 go. And they've got the whistle going and it's yeah. like, you, yeah, it's very different. Well, and this is where what, cause for me, yoga is a very personal experience. So I like enough space where like I'm there and I'm guiding, but ultimately for me, what I'm trying to do is like bring you back to you and let you have an experience of you. It's not about me. Right. And so I'm, you know, I, I'm making suggestions. I'm offering things with enough silence for, you know, the student to actually, um, you know, can they, can it land in them? What I might've just instructed or, or talked about, or, um, and then there's, you know, there would be like kind of a, we call it an arc to a class it starts off a little gentle. It starts to pick up in terms of intensity. So my, my, my voice might get a little louder, a little more directive, you know, and then it starts to wind down and cool down. And then there's going to be a lot less, um, instruction there as well and more soothing because that's the energy that I'm oh, wanting to yeah. and you can feel the different energy with all of the different instructors and you kind of know like once they that first syllable out kind of what you're getting into one of the things that surprised me is I think people assume that there's an instructor at the at the front of the class yeah who's you know doing the entire class with you and you're just following along and that's actually not yeah the case yeah so different it's going to be different at different okay. places at yoga town we don't we're not at the front doing the class and for me I feel like well one you could be at home watching a YouTube video if you're going to be in a room watching a person at the front doing like that's not a lot so um we always are walking around the room so that we can you know, we might offer some assists. Um, and, but and even the just, dialogue is the class. Like yeah. you walk through it's verbal cueing. It is verbal cueing yep. of every single every yep. single movement that we're doing yep. is a verbal instruction. Yeah. Yeah. To help people again get in their bodies. So it's not it's harder to do to think of, oh right, my right arm has to go, you know, it, it takes a little bit to start to um, but that's part of the I want people to just have a better understanding of their own body right? And learn a little more. And that takes some practice. It takes some getting used to. But I, it's also like, I feel like especially starting out, I always kind of joke, you feel like you're a little confused, you're a little lost, you're not really sure what's going on. But again, if I focus on more how you're feeling. So don't worry about trying to get it perfect, because there is no perfect, it's going to be different from person to person. And I always say, like, hopefully you walk out of the room feeling better than when you walked in. And you're going to perfect. Yeah. You're also going to be if you're doing it at Yoga Town, you're going to be drenched because it is hot. Yeah. So what is the purpose? Yep. And why why the shift, especially over the last couple of years that people have shifted into a more of a hot yoga way of practicing? Yeah. So for me, the heat just adds a level of intensity that I love. I love personally, and I feel like with heat, you relax a little more. So if I'm in a, even a room temperature, it takes me a little while to get going before I'm warmed up enough to even do. So I feel like it kind of naturally then will get you warmed up. 
there's also something for me personally about the sweat and feeling like I've just left a puddle of stress and shit and like worries. And I'm just like, okay, goodbye. Like, I don't need you anymore. So there's something very like just visceral about like seeing the sweat, right? I, I almost call I, a phrase I like to use is like, I've been showered from the inside out. So I leave just feeling clean, feeling like I've been cleansed and kind of washed from the inside out. Um, that's a really interesting way of, of seeing it. Cause it's not like, I mean, I do everything right. I run, I bike, I swim, yeah. I'm, I'm you active. Do triathlon. Totally. I, yeah. Totally. I don't even think I have time to even get to the totally. triathlon. And I love yet. it all. I love it all. But there's something very different for me about yoga. When I go for a run and I'm sweaty, I feel kind of like gross sweaty and I have to have a shower right away. Now I shower after yoga. Okay. Let me just say that for everybody. <laughs> um, but I don't feel that dirty kind of sweaty when I come out of a, of a hot yoga class, I actually feel quite clean and I'll rinse off for sure. But I don't have that same kind of like gross sweat that I would if I'm just at a gym or go for a run or a bike or whatever. Um, the other thing it does is it adds a layer or adds an element of the cardio. So the heat, um, you know, and pay attention next time you're in some classes, but there's certain poses, especially where I'll feel my heart literally beating like a mile a minute. Right. So people will often say like, oh, yeah, it was really great. But then like they feel like they need to get cardio in as well. And I'm like, you know, your heart is getting a workout when you do hot yoga. And that's the heat that helps to enhance or facilitate that. So um, it kind of adds that sort of cardio component. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and if it's a busier class, the room is hotter. That's one yeah. thing, too. Right. The more people in there, more it's people like- in the room, the hotter it'll get. Totally, totally. And yeah, you know, and it's also like we're in Ottawa and it's minus 30 outside. And there's something to be said too for just like, it's, it's, it, you walk into the room. I feel like the minute yes. I walk into the room, I don't even have to do anything. I just get, it's almost like a warm, like a hug. And I immediately, my shoulders drop. I'm like, oh, I take a big exhale. I'm like, okay, I already feel better. So there's something about to just really like we're in Ottawa. It's minus 30. Winters can be long. Um, so there's that side of it too, I think, for a lot of people. It just feels good. It does. Yeah. 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 Feels good. Well, because and, I only sorry, have... one more thing. Yeah. And you, if you don't have a lot of flexibility, it gives you greater range of motion as well. So if I'd say that to people who are, they're like, oh my God, I'm the most inflexible person. I'm so tight. I'm so stiff. The heat actually helps right? Because it just helps you warm up. You have, you're a little more limber. The heat helps. It definitely allows you yeah. to go a little bit deeper. Yeah. I, I feel that immediately. Yeah. So would, what would you say to the stubborn diehard? I'm never going to do this. You know, my husband will never try this. Like, so be, because they're having trouble touching their toes, right? Yeah. Why on earth would they go to a yoga class? Yeah. Yeah, totally. So I used to be like, I kind of called myself like the yoga dealer or the yoga pusher. I was like, I had to get everyone to do yoga. Um, I've really like chilled out and I've like, I, people need to be ready. They need to be ready. And so for me, um, it's just like, keep going, be the example. I can't tell you how many, especially my family and the people who have known me my whole life, that they, like, they're like, you're actually a different person. Like you are 180, totally a different person physically definitely emotionally, you know, I was very up and down. We didn't know if it was going to be a good day or a bad day. You know, if you talk to my pa- my family when I was younger, you know, and it was like, don't say anything that's going to set her off, kind of walking on eggshells. So it's really like evened me out a lot. And so I feel like even some of that is just like, they, then people want a little bit of that. Like, so what have you been doing? You know, you okay. look great. You, you, you know, you, okay, Tracy, you, wait, wait, wait. Cause help me out. Cause like, I know we have like two minutes, yeah. like for kids then. Yeah. Cause I'm just thinking like, you know, totally. Some, there's kids, you know, like you you see their personality traits already starting, you know, when, when can you introduce this or Ugh. this method or yeah. anything to, to yeah. kids to yeah. be able to maybe monitor yeah. their own. Oh, hundred percent right away. Self. Like right away. And it's, for me, it's less about like yoga poses and it's more the breathing exercises and the kind of, um, you know, the ways to just self-regulate and, um, like that, that inward going inward and not everything being so outward focused all the time and just teaching them how to calm themselves, teaching them how to relax, um, right away. Like, I think it's important and it's so helpful to, and kids love it. They just soak it up like a sponge. They really do. It's amazing. They don't come in kicking and screaming. No, 
They love it. They love it, love it, love it. And so, you know, teaching kids yoga would be more of a, um, you know, you, you add an element of like story to it and you have to kind of keep it fun and light and, but just teaching some of the, you know, it's, it's not about perfect, right? It's about progress. It's not a competition, right? Cause that's the other thing, especially growing up in where I played a lot of sports, um, you know, there was like an MVP and I would always get the most sportsman like, and I hated it. It pissed me off. I wanted to be MVP. Um, but so even that, like, it's not a competition. It's just like something for yourself. Um, and not perfect. All of those. I just mm-hmm. feel like you start to introduce if you can start to introduce those, those to, a, to, you know, to right kids. Yeah. But you said it has to come in time, right? Yeah. So yeah. even for the adults that you come, it, it, it has to come in time. It has to come in time. And I'm like, just try just try it. So, you know, don't, um, of course I'm like the person needs to be ready for sure. And often I find there's, uh, something that will happen and maybe it's like an injury or a, um, you know, something at work or like, there's usually like a trigger that will, okay, you know what, what I've been doing up until now hasn't been working or is no longer working for me. Maybe it's time to try something new. Would you say, can you rank it weight loss, flexibility, core strength? Like where would you say for people's overall health? I know we're going to start like mental first, but yeah. Where would you say if people are like, oh, I'm good doing yoga to lose weight or I'm doing yoga to have more core strength? Like, yeah. Is there like a pyramid of how it works? Not really. It really is unique to each person. Mm-hmm. And that's what's so cool about it. There's so many benefits that it has something to offer everyone which I think is really great. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Losing weight, flexibility, strength. And I would just say for overall balance, really, like um, I hear it all the time. Like it keeps me sane. It keeps me whole. It keeps me, you know, patient. It, it re, you know, like, yeah. like my kids will tell me if I haven't gone for a few days, they can tell. And they're encouraging me, mom, go to yoga. <laughs> Sounds like my house. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Have you had your workout today yet, mom? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a wonderful opportunity because I know this is how I got into it. There was, um, if you're looking at the yoga town, there was a great one month unlimited, yeah. like it was $50. Yeah. I got in as many classes. I tried as many things as I could. Yeah. So there's an opportunity for people to come in and, and, and try as yes. you were mentioning. And you know, we, and didn't, I, we, we didn't always do that, but the reason is because I don't want people to just try For me, trying it means take a month and come as many times as you can. Even if that means you do a little bit less of something else, trying it is not one class. Cause while yoga is like profoundly impactful and I really believe in it, like with everything I have, it's not a quick fix. It's not, you know, often you can feel benefits in just a couple of classes for sure. But I feel like it's something that you, you know, you get the benefits are exponential when you're practicing consistently over a period of time. So try it for a month, um, get in as many classes as you can. And it's amazing. Even in 30 days, you might've experienced it. Well, I I did experience it and you know, it was, I'm one of those converted, right? The, I'm never doing yoga. I don't have, I like, I don't have the time just like I didn't have the time for meditation. Yeah. I had too much, you know, too much on the go. Yeah. And it feels like with adding it in the mindfulness of being aware of other things that need to happen, or I can come out of the class knowing, okay. I've had my time now and I was able to kind of logistically go through what comes next. So it's been, it's been amazing and I'm, I'm incredibly grateful, but as you mentioned right off the top, there's something about the space that you're not forcing anything on anyone. It's just clean, beautiful lines, great colors. No, you know, there's no posters of yogis hanging around for us to feel intimidated or out of place. No. And it's also very, um, like it's accessible. Like while it is challenging, especially the hot room yoga is going to add, you know, it's going to be a little bit more intense. Um, but it's not, we're not doing crazy things. We're not doing crazy things. It's, and you see, you, you see that when you come, you're like, Oh, okay. Normal people just like me. There's no one, there's nobody standing on their head doing something uh, else. No. Uh, what would you say? My last question to that that younger woman that was lying in that, that hospital room. Yeah. What do you say like to, to, to the growth, like to the change that you did that, that if, okay, if I'm going to be here, yeah, I'm going to thrive and I'm going to have purpose. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's crazy to look back actually. And to think about that. And, and what, what comes to mind for me is I've always, you know, having not necessarily known like where the end is, what the end is, what the, but that like, okay, what am I, what's the next thing? 
what's the next thing? What's the next thing? And, and, you know, kind of doing that, um, just like the, you know, keeping the motion there and doing the next thing, even if I felt terrified and felt scared. Um, but whoo, yeah. And what I would also say is, you know, part of the reason when I wrote that blog post, you know, when we had our 10 year anniversary was also just to let people know that there is help out there. I think I was silent for such a long time and held so much inside. Um, I wish that I would have gotten help sooner and I would have spoke about it um, sooner. So I also just anybody who might be listening, who feels like they're at a low point, um, you know, there's support, there's people, there's practices, there's tools, um, you know, just find something that you feel might, you know, you, but you've got to try, mm-hmm. right. That, that whole, like, okay, try it. Some things will work. Some won't some, but take some action. Keep moving forward. You've done an amazing job moving forward. Thank you. Yeah. And, Thank and you. now path is still like light lit and shining on you so uh it's been an absolute pleasure thank you for sharing the story where can people if they're at myyogatown.com yeah where is by the way where is the blog post i mean i know it got sent to me oh then. yeah it's on our we actually have a blog on our website okay. yeah so they could just search um and they could it's, even just search yoga town 10 year it was my 10 year yeah. it was our 10 year anniversary that was when i wrote it um yeah yeah all right well i'll see you at cast i take tracy's class monday nights by the way where even oh my god it's like killer love it awesome Uh, i want to thank everyone for listening to yet another episode of living your life uh please as we continue to see the podcast growing if you can subscribe and maybe comment or as always just share like let your friends know that it's out there let it uh, people know it exists it's so nice when i have new people that are finding the podcast going oh my god i had no idea it was here you've got like over a hundred some episodes there's so many things uh, to be able to take in and appreciate the time and if you're looking for more myyogatown.com if you're looking to get in and highly recommend that one month trial it was uh it was fantastic amazing thanks for joining us. thank you so much